already, so we'll see how it do. All right. It says live on my screen. There we go. Oh, we've already got we've already got a, a little crowd going. How about that? <clears throat> got ten ten folks watching. Wow! You give me stage fright. <laughs> well, <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, normally I just you know when I come on live I just come on and people kind of filter in and it's not that big of a deal, you know, but for some reason today, this was the first one I actually scheduled. Uh, I got a little bit of the jitters, you know. I typically don't schedule. I have two or three times, but I usually just jump on whenever the urge hits. All right. I hate to be a I hate to play favorites, but I think I'm going to smoke this 320 again. I'm smoking this new country gentleman I got from you. Oh, nice. Well, maybe I should smoke a country gent. Well, I don't know. Let's have a little variety, eh? What, what you smoking tonight? I've got some McBaron plum pudding in it. Hmm. I think I'll smoke some Seattle Pipe Club's plum pudding then. When I ordered this, I I thought I ordered the straight bit, but I accidentally ordered the bent. But I'm kind of liking this bent. Or did I screw the order up? No, it says on the order form bent. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> of course, it took that was the third try in ordering it, so I probably just forgot to click bent, I mean straight. So we got Michael Gretton, I think that's how you pronounce it. He says he's a new pipe smoker, waiting for warm weather, but smoking inside his garage with a space heater is not the way to experience a good pipe smoke. Well, that's what I'm doing. I'm a Florida boy, but it's cold today, so I got the space heater on. I'm sitting out on my porch in about 58 degree weather with 20 mile an hour winds blowing. Matches says, we want to show, man. Well, that's about all you're going to get, I think. <laughs> I don't uh, know how to dance. <laughs> yeah. You get, do you give out your name in your videos? I don't recall. Say that again. Do you give out your name on your videos? I don't it, recall. It's, see, some people know it. Some people don't. Yeah, I got you. I, it doesn't matter to me. It don't matter to me. Is that bread? I don't know. Who is that? I know the song. I don't know who sang it. Matches will know if, it, if it's bread. <laughs> yeah, John called me out because I was asking him what his musical interests were on that first hangout we did. Oh, yeah? He's like, you don't remember? I made you a VR about my favorite music. <laughs> I right. can tell you most of John's favorite stuff. Well, you know, I, I had a... I had about 30 entries, I think. It was hard to keep them all straight. Yeah. It's funny. You and I share a lot of musical taste, and John and I share a lot of musical taste. <clears throat> I have a pretty pretty de eclectic group of people that I listen to. Oh, man. I've just let the comments fly through. Let's see. Okay, so you're smoking McBaron plum pudding? Plum cake. Plum cake. And I'm smoking Seattle Pipe Club's plum pudding. I 
don't smoke this one that often, but it's growing on me. Now that's not the one that's, um, there's two plum cakes. That's not the one that's topped with like wine, is it? I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's got a very, um, it, it smells like a, like a plum flavored wine kind of topping. Hmm. Definitely has kind of an alcohol smell to it but I'm not sure. I bought two tins of it for a giveaway and ended up giving away a tin of something else and keeping one for myself. Cool. I think I got this finally going, so let's catch up on some comments. Matches the smoking ready rubbed, the lane, lane ready rubbed. Never had that. <clears throat> it ain't so bad. I've had one cue. He's smoking in an olive wood. I'm trying to, I would like to carry olive wood pipes of some kind. I'm kind of looking out for that right now. I've been wanting to get one from Carl, olive wood pipe smoker. Mm -hmm. If I'm ever able to do that, I'm going to commission something. So, uh, Chad, if I remember, you're an Iron Maiden fan. Yeah, I'm a pretty big Iron Maiden fan. So I just bought my ticket to go see Maiden in Atlanta in uh, June, July? July. I think the closest they're going to be to me is in L.A. But that'll be the first time I've ever seen, uh, seen Iron Maiden. That'll be cool. <clears throat> yeah, I've seen a lot of videos from them, and they their show just remains consistently good going back to, you know, 85 for the last 30 years. They've just been incredibly consistent. <laughs> oh, every time I hum, it's going to switch cameras over to me. I better not do that. <laughs> Law and Smoke's got a giveaway going right now, an English themed giveaway. I've been thinking about it. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to try to incorporate Iron Maiden and Monty Python together somehow, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. Interesting. So I didn't really introduce you or say hi to anybody. We just started. So. Welcome to the Pipe Nook. I'm Eddie Gray. This is the West Parlor. And I have with me, you want to introduce yourself? I'm Yardism. Some of you know me as Yard. Some know me as Chad. And I'm in the real West Parlor on the West Coast. <clears throat> well... I guess you could say it's the West 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 parlor. I don't know. It's far from a parlor. I'm on I'm on the West driveway. Matches, I'm just seeing your comment about the cold. Let me see what the temperature is outside my door. It is currently fifty degrees. And yeah, it was, a, it was a little nippy in the garage. I think it's about 58 here. <clears throat> so if matches is cold, good. <laughs> right. I, I think it was 31 degrees here early morning today. Mm, that'll kill the oranges. <sighs> yeah, we had a hard freeze one time. I don't remember if I... I told y'all this or not already, but uh, I was driving back from Mobile, Alabama. 
and it was super cold one morning and I had to stop on the side of the interstate and take a picture because, you know, you enter Florida and there's welcome to the sunshine state and you could still read it, but it was completely frosted over. <laughs> that was before Instagram. That's definitely Instagram worthy though. I used to live in North Alabama. We would get snow and ice typically once or twice a year. But since I've been in California and I've been out here for 19 years, I've seen snow flurries one time. That was about 12 years ago. We, I see snow up in the mountains off in the distance, but where I'm at on the valley floor, it, it rarely gets below freezing. Oh, Cliff Higgins just got some haunted bookshop from me. Wow. Yeah, definitely let me know what you think. Arkansas Mike is smoking Eileen's Dream. That is one I'm not a fan of. <laughs> I've never had that, but I've heard a lot of people talk about it. It smells amazing, just like most aromatics that, you know, I mean, it smells great. It just doesn't, to me, it doesn't smoke all that well. Aromatics, to me, after about a quarter of the bowl, they all have the same flavor. And it's like, um, it tastes like a cross between cooked celery and metal <laughs> or something. I, just, <laughs> I do not like it. I've tried quite got, a few. Yeah, I've I've got so many. I've probably got fifty aromatics jarred up that God knows if I'll ever get through them. Yeah. <clears throat> I think Brian, Metalhead Cigar Guy, gave all of his away in a giveaway last year. Somebody asked, let's see. Michael Gretton asked if plum pudding is considered an aromatic. I wouldn't say it's an aromatic. Um, there's a good, good bit going on there, and it may be lightly topped, but I definitely wouldn't call it an aromatic. Um, it's a nice English blend. It's got a very unique property. When you rub it out, you look like you've been working in the coal mine afterwards. Yeah, that's how that's how uh, GLP's gaslight is for me too. Austin Byerly says, "Chad, are you a Rams fan or a Chargers fan, or neither?" Neither. I almost take offense to that question. <laughs> now, I'm a, I've been a Philadelphia Eagles fan since about 1975. And I like the Raiders too, because mainly because Bo Jackson played for the Raiders and I was an Auburn fan, but I'm not a hardcore Raiders fan. Let's see. Man, these comments. I tell you what, guys, one of these days I'm going to have to try one of these uh, live feeds without the comments. I know that's going to hurt some feelings, but it's so hard to keep up, and I hate missing a comment. Um, I kind of joined in a hurry for those watching, so I don't have, I can't see your comments, just so you know. Uh, so London Colin with Simon started talking about guys got pipes. It's the new new channel. Guys got pipes. Um, he's been making some quality videos, and I think it was this morning he posted a video with him and his daughter. Uh, he was trying to teach her how to smoke a pipe, uh, kind of like Scott from Aristocob was. I think that was his niece. He was in his nephew. He was trying to teach him how to smoke a pipe. 
I saw that video pop up, but I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. I started following him just several days ago. It's a good one. And, uh, yeah, his daughter, you know, he was like, well, tell, tell the people about yourself a little bit. And she's like, basically, you know, I'm a singer, dancer, actress, magician. <laughs> she, did, she did a little bit of everything. It was funny. And he was a radio broadcaster. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Sportscaster. Hmm. Which, you know, I don't get into sports, so he could be the most famous sportscaster of all time, and I wouldn't know, but he does <laughs> have a good voice. <clears throat> I'm a bit of a sports fan. I like hockey quite a bit. I follow golf pretty closely. Levi, I see you in the comments there. By the samurais in the house. Levi. Long time no see, brother. I had Harry mention that about Bengal slices, says it has an aromatic topping, which is, is true. To me, the Bengal slices taste like, uh, almost like licorice. It's got that anisette type taste. Can't remember if it's Bengal slices. What is the other Lancer slices? I think is the other. I think it's the Bengal slices that smells like Play-Doh when you open up the. the... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh yeah, and then another fairly new guy, pipes and guitars. He's not on here. Somebody shouted him out. Oh. I subbed him last week sometime as well. I find a lot of new folks in these live chats. Probably most of the new people that I find comes through live chat comments. So yeah, Chad, I appreciate you hopping on with me. It, it would have just been a, uh, a hangout of one if not for that. <laughs> I know you're you're the eleventh hour hail mary to get somebody on here with me. <laughs> I'm usually available if you need somebody. But I was gonna I was gonna have somebody on uh, that used to make a good bit of vids in the YTPC, but he hasn't made one in over a year now. I'm not going to tell you who, but uh, it would have been nice to have him on. Hopefully, sometime soon. So. I think he's still active on Instagram, isn't he? Probably, but I'm not active on Instagram, so I but I think you're right. Oh, let's see. So if there's anybody brave enough that wants to try this hangout thing and uh, maybe want to chat with me and Chad for a little bit you can send a text message and maybe even if you don't want to do it now, you want to do it some other time. You can send a text message to 850-610-2032. That's 850-610-2032. Send a text message and let me know your name, your YouTube channel, if you have one, and your email address. And your okay. pen. Yeah, and your PIN number and your social security number. I, and I'm trying to keep a list of folks. Um, Chad, you you were on the list. <laughs> uh, I was going to have you on at some point in the next few weeks, but you got you got bumped up. Bumped up. So you were on, and I wanted to talk about this, but you were on the uh, the uh, what do you call it, the Zoom cast that Northern Bohemian uh, did the other day. Yeah, that was, um, that was pretty interesting. I, I liked that format a lot. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot too. You were able to do like with Google Hangouts at the moment, you can't do the Brady Bunch style grid where you can see everybody that's on the, 
the call or the video conference. But with Zoom, you can do that. So it was really neat. It's pretty versatile, too. You can see four people, at least on my phone, you can see four people at one time, and you could scroll through as many pages of people as there were, or you could see yourself, or you could see whoever was talking at the moment. And um, it, it's pretty versatile. It's a very stable platform. Uh, the audio quality was great on it. I actually joined one that Professor Jeremiah did, uh, I think it was last night. I jumped on right at the tail end of it. So yeah, it, you know, it would be cool to use Zoom, but to have the, you know, Northern Bohemian, he didn't want to do the live stream aspect. He just wanted to do a hangout, uh, which was great. Um, but to do a live stream with Zoom, it costs about $55 a month, which free is better. So I, for now, I'll stick with the uh, Google Hangouts. Yeah. Um, if anybody is interested in that, there are a couple of guys that are doing those. It seems like they're going to be doing regularly. You can check out their channels, either Northern Bohemian or Professor Jeremiah. Both of them have videos up about it. Yeah. It's a good I didn't get to do Professor Jeremiah's. Um, did, he made a video about it, and then I completely forgot to check in. Of course, I was super busy last night, but um, I would like to do that. I had a lot of fun with Northern Bohemians Hangout. Things are different when you know the camera's not rolling, so to speak. Um, a little bit more fast and loose. <laughs> of course you never know somebody might be screen capturing good yeah that could happen but even then i mean i only knew um four people in there besides myself and there were i think 13 of us but everybody Everybody seemed like people that I knew, if that makes any sense. I mean, they were all just part of the community that I haven't interacted with, I guess. A bunch of the old guard, I think. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I probably knew about five or six folks in there. I didn't write, jot down the list or anything, but that sounds about right. Yeah. So I saw where, speaking of music things, we were earlier, they're releasing a new Tom Petty compilation. Um, two of his kids and Ben Montinch and Mike Campbell put it together. So it should be pretty good. It's got some, some supposed stuff that we haven't heard. Is that, you're talking about a CD collection? Yeah. Okay. Or MP3s, what, whatever the kids are doing now. Yeah, I don't know how they'll release it, but it's... Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's called The Best of Everything. There you go. Uh, I got an email. I'm on the Heartbreakers mailing list. Um, it Yeah, it looked really interesting. I saw the track list, but I didn't, I don't think they had the story of like who put it together. So you never know until you do some digging if it's just a cash grab, you yeah. know, a label or whatever. But it looked like a really good uh, collection of his stuff. Um, included some mud crutch stuff and stuff down through the years. Um, so, yeah, I'll probably wind up with it at some point. And I, I like that it was called The Best of Everything. That's an awesome Tom Petty reference. From, yeah. uh, I think that was on Southern Accents from 1985. That was mm -hmm. the album closer. That's one of my favorite albums of his, favorite songs, too. I tell you another favorite song is on um was it let me up i've had enough which is kind of a patchwork album but uh there's a song called it'll all work out starts off with mandolin mm. beautiful beautiful song 
think my favorite thing that he put out in a long time was that live compilation. It has like 50, 50 or 60 songs on it, and it's all live from over you know various years. Really, really well put together. Yeah, they, they mix that super well to where like you get the audience, uh, you know, applause in between the songs and it's just seamless the way they did it. So they could have went from a song that was recorded in 1978 to one that was recorded in 1987 and you couldn't, couldn't even tell. Mm -hmm. It just sounded like so one show. Good. There was some good rarities on there too that you just typically don't hear. But he was, I think that band was absolutely at their peak live. They were one of the best live bands I've ever seen. Yeah, and that that's why, you know, when he did that, uh, the Super Bowl show, people started saying, oh, he was lip syncing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, why would I start lip syncing now? Really? Had less force, no. I think he would probably be one of those artists that would say, if I can't do it live, then find someone else. Yeah. I was fortunate enough to see them three times. Oh. Only got to see them, see them once. I saw them in 90, I saw them twice in 95, just to, like a month apart in Nashville and then in Huntsville. And I think the other time was in 99. I, uh, that, I, I saw them in Nashville. That Huntsville show was kind of a, a special one for me. It was reserved seating, and they had just fold-up chairs on the floor. And about five minutes into his set, everybody rushed the stage and knocked down a bunch of chairs around where I was sitting. So I had this big, massive pile of chairs that created like a 10-foot barrier around me, and I just stood where I was at for the whole show. It was like me and the band. It was great. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, I'm a little afraid of this Iron Maiden show because I heard back in the 80s anyway, they had the Guinness World Record for the loudest concert. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but I, I think in this day and age, there there are regulations in place to keep that from happening. Yeah. And I've seen a bunch of their live stuff on like YouTube and it it sounds really good. It's like really well mixed and very balanced. So I think they're I mean that was 34 years ago when loud was better, but I think they've kind of toned it down a little bit and going more for great sound and a great show instead of just power. George Bruno's in the house. Thanks for the tip, George. Oh. My virtual tip jar. How much did we get? Got a buck. Got a buck. All right. Thanks, George. After he gives me my share in taxes, thanks for the seven cents. I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody asked me again what I was smoking, a late comer to the party. So I'm smoking some uh, Seattle Pipe Club Plum Pudding. The old yeah, 10. Cool stuff. Yeah, from 2013, I believe. Oh, so Match has set up his tip jar. I don't know how I, mine's just there. I couldn't even figure out how to turn it off if I wanted to. I have to do some more digging. George, I meant no disrespect. So, um, what was your channel name before? Mine or George? Uh, yours. 
Um, when I first started, it was just my name, and then in parentheses, I had Yardism, and then I cut out. I just cut my name off of it, so it's just Yardism. Oh, okay. You guys recognize this uh, album cover right here? Let me flex that, my muscles. Is that the outfield? That is the outfield. Play deep yeah, from 1985. Play. <clears throat> I've mentioned. Go ahead. Both of y'all that watched my top 20 albums of all time video from a couple years back will maybe recall that's actually made the number one slot. And I think I made a comment on that video that an outfield concert I saw is in my top 10 shows of all time. I saw them open up for Night Ranger in 85 and they blew Night Ranger away. Imagine, I can imagine. Nothing against Night Ranger. Yeah, they were, they, I mean, they were a, a somewhat big band at that time, and the outfield had that, they were really going off that one album at that, that point. But, man, they put on a fantastic show. I've seen a few shows like uh -oh. the Headlining Act. Did I lose you? Just temporarily. You're back. Okay. Have you seen any shows like that where the opening act just blew the other one away? I'm trying to think. Nothing nothing really springs to mind. But I, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure I've been to a couple. I saw John Cougar when he was still John Cougar open up for Hart in 1982 and he pretty much dominated that show and I actually went on YouTube recently and found a live show from that era that was just a week after that show that I saw and uh, it, it held up pretty good actually and I saw Bon Jovi open up for Rat oh wow and they're um, 7,800 degrees Fahrenheit tour, so they only had that song um, Runaway at the point. It was their only real song that you'd ever heard. But they, they put on a really good show. And I saw Guns N' Roses open up for Motley Crue on their first ever big tour. I didn't even know who they were. That would have been like 86, right? 87 was the, the tour. Mm. I saw the fourth show of the tour. I kept calling them Love and Rockets. There's this band called Love and Rockets, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Close. That was a comic book. <laughs> And then I saw Queensryche open up for Rat. That was in 86. We're boring the heck out of people, I'm sure. Probably. <laughs> yeah, I, I was just not quite old enough to see all those bands in, the, in their glory days. Uh, in 1986, I was 11. Couldn't get mommy to take me to the shows. I saw some shows in the late 70s and early 80s when I was 12, 13, 14 years old as well. I saw um, Ted Nugent, Van Halen, Kansas. That's an experience for a 12 year old. Mm -hmm. Van Halen would have been great to see back in that time period. I saw them during that reunion yeah. tour they did a while back. 
I saw them three times. As good as they were with Hagar, there's there's nothing that matched their live show with David Lee Roth. No, and I, I heard David Lee Roth talking on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. Have I frozen up? Well, we keep losing your video, but I'm hearing you. I don't know how to make it come back. Oh, Nick Piper gave us a super chat. Thank you, Nick. Good to see you in the house. I saw you up above. I didn't get to comment. They're coming through fast and furious. There I am. Somebody. Hello, Nick Piper. Yeah, Nick Piper. So Northwest Piper says, y'all know Van Hagar was way better. <laughs> I always said they were two different bands. They really were. And that's kind of what David Lee Roth and Joe Rogan were talking about. Um, you know, David Lee Roth was like, he was kind of making little cuts here and there, but um, for the most part, he kept it clean. He was just like, they, they were a different, different ent entity. You know, Sammy Hagar was singing about love. He was singing love songs. And uh, Dave was like, I ain't talking about love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just in a different light. Will Piper wants to know if that's your basement stairs that you're sitting on. No, it's my porch. Fifty One Fifty was a good album, uh, Ralph. And Live Without a Net is a fantastic concert. Mm -hmm. If you get a chance to ever see that, I can't take anything away from Sammy. No. And the stuff he's done since Van Halen has all been really good stuff. I love the chicken foot stuff. Yeah, with Satch. Who else is in that? It's Sammy Hagar, Joe Satriani. Um, Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Mm -hmm. And... Michael Anthony on bass. Oh, that's right. And he's got a band out right now. Can't remember what they're called, but it's him, Michael Anthony, um, Jason Bonham on drums. And I can't remember the guitar player's name, but he played with Sammy and the Wabaritos and some of those other little bands that he put together. He's a good guitar player. Oh, I've got to watch my battery life. We might have to call it in a little bit because I'm at 34% at the moment. But the, the webcam with the live stream and all that, uh, it does eat away the battery. Yep. When I, whenever I do a live, it's I'm always plugged in because it will just zap my battery. I think Simon just got off. Yep. Board another one to tears. He had an interesting live a couple of days ago. It was a very, very touchy subject that a lot of people kind of were very polarized on one side or the other. And I made the comment, I was like, this is not a good format for this type of discussion. <laughs> it kind of devolved a little bit, but he held it together pretty well. <laughs> I do my best not to tread in those controversial waters um, on my channel, you know. But, but, um, and I don't know what that topic was at all, but I am going to make a video pretty soon talking about pipe filters. And uh, mm. I know that doesn't sound controversial, but it is. it does split opinions and, uh, you know, my fear, and you'll see the video, 
I'm not going to get all into it here, but my fear is that people poo poo on those filters. And so people think people getting into pipe smoking that might enjoy it with filters. They think, well, so-and-so doesn't use a filter. So I guess that's the right way to do it. And I'm a failure, so I'm not going to try anymore. Mm. I've got, I don't use them in my cobs. I have a couple of times. It just, to me, it doesn't, um, doesn't change anything in a significant enough way to, to make me um, enjoy the process of cleaning with a filter. <laughs> Put it that way. But I do use one occasionally in my Savinelli 6 millimeter pipe. Mm -mm. So I started advertising on Briar Report. I don't know if y'all have seen that or not, but you'll see some, some ads popping up for the pipe nook here and there. I think I've seen one. I hey. advertised for you in my last live stream. <laughs> I had the shirt on. I'm going to... Um, does it fit okay? Fits perfect. Yeah, good. I, uh, I'm also going to be uh, advertising on Pipe and Tamper podcast uh, here in March. Mm -hmm. Just throwing out some advertising dollars to see if I can scare up some business. Yeah. Well, I read a thing recently where digital advertising has just overtaken all other forms of advertising put together so people are not advertising in print and radio and tv and stuff like that anymore it's it's headed towards a complete digital future benjamin loveless probably five minutes ago <laughs> asked <laughs> if it's just him or does the pipe community uh and pipe smoking as a whole seem to be growing well, I hope so. I don't have the facts and figures for that. It seems like it is to me because a lot of the new guys that are showing up on, on YouTube have been smoking less than a year. So there's been a bump, it seems. Well, that's good. I hope so. You know, wouldn't it be amazing if, like, a hundred years from now, this will be a controversial statement, but, you know, I know some people are like, don't take away my cigarettes, but wouldn't it be great if it flip-flopped and, like, 90% of tobacco use was pipe smoking once again and cigarettes were the minority? That would be interesting. I remember being a kid and walking around with my granddad like in downtown and you'd see four or five people walking down you know the city street or sitting in a cafe or whatever with a pipe and it's i've only seen one person in public smoking pipe since i've been in the ytpc and that's three years yeah probably me too i saw one guy at publix one day and he got out of his car with a pipe and he was an older gentleman and he walked up to in front of the Publix and he stood there and, you know, finished his bowl before he put it in his pocket and walked in. But, um, and I was just kind of, when I saw him, I was just kind of trolling around the parking lot. I didn't want to seem too creepy, but at the same time, I was just debating with myself, do I need to, should I hop out and, you know, be like, hey, I see you smoke a pipe. But I finally decided against it. <laughs> the guy I saw was standing outside of a McDonald's as I was coming out. And I asked him what he was smoking and talked about his pipe for a few minutes and went on my way.
Yep, Benjamin Lovely. Most open back. Oh, what's that? What is the most popular tobacco you sell? I made that video just recently. Did I post it yet? I don't remember. Sorry. <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if it's posted yet. Let me let me check. Well I don't think it's posted yet. Maybe it is. I'll dig into that later, but uh, if I recall, it's Cornell and Deal's autumn evening. That sells quite a bit. It's it's a good aromatic blend. And you you sell probably what twenty five different blends currently. No, I I sell probably fifty Cornell and Deal blends at this point. Um, I think at last count I was at like a hundred. I had gotten up to one hundred and twenty five blends, um, and I'm trying to cut dial that back. Not very successfully. <laughs> like everybody's seller I'm trying to shorten it but you know if you look at my site right now I've only got three pipe brands I've got six uh, pipe tobacco brands seven technically um, but yeah I mean that adds up it's a it's a lot of stuff so it's still kind of overwhelms you know, some people who are just looking for their first pipe and tobaccos to buy. I'm sure you share this sentiment, but it would be nice if more smaller sellers like yourself, smaller brick and mortars, had more of the market share. Yeah, I agree. I would look into opening a brick and mortar if it weren't for the Florida State uh, laws or the, the taxation. Yeah. It's crazy out here, the taxes. I mean, I'm not one to complain because of our friends in Canada and Europe, but they just raised the tobacco tax in California last June. 164 percent over what it was already. Yeah. So a, a tin of like Orlick Golden sliced, normally about a ten dollar tin. It's nineteen bucks out here. Yeah, that that's about what I would have to sell to Florida residents for. It's an eighty five percent surtax. So Nathan asks, and he says, I'm looking into getting into pipe smoking. What's what a tobacco would you recommend? Hmm. Chad, you got any thoughts on that? I've got like a whole essay that I write. And Nathan, I can send that form letter to you if you want. Just send an email to um, the pipe nook at outlook.com and I'll get that over to you. So what do you tell people, Chad? Um, if they're looking for something sweet and flavorful, I think Lane One Q is a good start. If they're looking for something like tobacco-y instead of aromatic, um, my my personal favorites are Burleys, but I don't I don't really have a good recommendation for a starter. My first was Elizabethan mixture. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. For a starter tobacco, you know, what people tend to think of when they think of tobacco is what their granddad smoked. Okay. So that's most likely going to be a drugstore blend. Uh, so just for them to make that connection, one of those would be a good one to start with. Carter Hall. Yeah. All this, <laughs> you know. That's why I carry those on the shop. Okay. So, but beyond that, I always tell people don't don't 
try one and be done. If you miss the mark the first time and you don't like what you try, that just might not be the kind of tobacco that you're into. It'd be like if you, you know, tried one slice of pizza your whole life and decided you didn't like pizza. Another good suggestion I've heard people do is like Boswell sampler packs where you can get maybe five or ten different tobaccos for, you know, an ounce a piece of all those for maybe 20 bucks or something. I don't know how much they are, but that might be a good way. Yeah, and I'm I'm not to the point where I can carry bulk blends. I just don't have that kind of space. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the the form letter I send out, I break down like five or six different types of tobacco blends into like even light, medium, and heavy. Uh, like so, a lot of Kia blends. I've got like light examples, medium, and heavy examples. And also, when you're looking for tobacco as a new pipe smoker, go on tobaccoreviews.com or smoking pipes or whatever and look at some of the reviews and look at one thing you want to look at is maybe the nicotine content. Because if you get one that's high in nicotine and start out with that, you might not continue. Harriet says, I believe people at the park I smoke at think I'm a unicorn. Well, Harriet, you are a unicorn. You're a pipe smoker, and not only that, a female pipe smoker. So, yeah. Who can shoot a bow and arrow? You remember... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, as far as pipes for a new smoker, start out with a cob. They're cheap. They smoke just wonderfully. And if you don't like it, you don't have a hundred dollar investment into it. Yeah, that's good. Solid. Good, solid advice. Ralph McCulley's asking what would be equivalent. Oh, wait, where'd it go? I just wound up with all kinds of stuff go, go by. I think my feed was hung up. What would be equivalent to Edgeworth slices? Is that a question? Or maybe it's part two of a comment. Does anyone know where I can score some Edgeworth slices or what would be an equivalent? I've never tried it, so I don't know. I think that's a um, UK blend, though. Oh yeah, so we we got some suggestions as well for first time pipe tobacco. We got Carter Hall from Matches, so we're on the same page. We got Velvet from Herfordville, another Carter Hall from Pipe Writer, Sir Walter. That was my grandpappy's favorite from Ralph McCulley. That Sir Walter would be a good one. A lot of people like Captain Black, and they've got four or five different blends. It, I seem to recall the words coming out of my mouth on camera at some point, and I cannot remember the blend I was talking about. But I said, you know, if you if you don't like this tobacco, you might not like pipe tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, ha I'll have to dig and see if I can find what, what I said that about. <laughs> Uh, 
it, it wasn't old dark fired. I don't think as much as I love old dark fired. I know that's not for everybody. It's one, it's one of my top fives for sure. Nick Piper mentioned for first timers, uh, the Peter Stokeby flakes. That's good tobacco, but you know, a flake as a starter, I don't know. And also a vapor as a starter might be kind of rough on somebody's tongue if they're not careful. My favorite Stokeby is the luxury twist flake. See, I don't like the twist flake because of that slight whatever that topping is. I think it's it's not a vanilla topping. What is it? I've got it over here. It says honey. It's a Virginia Cavendish with a honey topping. It reminds me of molasses. <laughs> It smells, it smells like vanilla to me, but a nice creamy vanilla. Um, not what I think about when I think about your typical vanilla tobacco flavoring. I like it and it burns away fairly quickly for me. Um, but because of that topping, I just kind of rather it wasn't there. So I prefer the luxury Navy Flake, which is just a Virginia Perique. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Different animal. You know, another one I really liked was uh, Drew Estate's Gatsby Flake. And when, they, when that went off the market, I bought about 20 of those and cellared them up. Mm. I would say my favorites, or at least my, my top five go-to tobaccos. And I realize not everybody like these. They're, I like Burley a lot. <clears throat> so I like Haunted Bookshop, Old Joe Krantz Original, Cube Cut Burley. It's Cornell and Deal. The um, Old Dark Fired I like, Luxury Twist, and Balkan Supreme. Those are probably my top go-tos. Luxury Twist, who makes that? That's the Stokeby. Oh, yeah. yeah. What You mean what we were just talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to live. Some reason, for some reason, I was thinking rope when you said twist. Uh, the only rope tobacco I've had was Goweth uh, Black Double X, and that's a different animal altogether. It is not a starter tobacco for sure. Harriet gives the advice, go to a pipe club and steal from people. <laughs> no, she says to sample from kind folks. But I'm, I'm just imagining somebody going into a pipe, a pipe <laughs> or a pipe club and just like hitting up the patrons for free samples. <laughs> 10 empty mason jars. Can I help you, sir? <laughs> Little sign that says I'm down on my luck. Would you care to donate a bowl or two? What would you guys think about me turning off comments for a live feed? Is that just absolutely out of the question? Um, and I'm specifically thinking about when I do a hangout. Okay. Um, or would you know? Would that be uh, okay to try once or twice? I don't want to be anti-community, definitely, um, but it it is hard to keep going through the feed and keeping a conversation going at the same time. I can keep up with them fairly well because I've normally only got a dozen people in my lives, but when you get up to 15, 20, 30 people, 
that's a different prospect. Mm. Well, let's see what we got here. We got 38 right now. I, I don't know how matches does it. He winds up with 150 or more. A lot of times when I'm in his live chats, I turn the chats off and just listen to him. Because it just scrolls by. It's like... Yeah, you know, some of these bigger YouTubers uh, or people on Twitch uh, that have their live feeds going, it's just a constant, just... I don't know how on earth you would even try to, most of them don't even try to keep up with the comments when it gets to that point. Yeah, most of those Twitch guys don't even pay any attention to it. Until they get a super chat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching a, a live today from, it was Dave Rubin, and somebody popped a $300 super chat in there. Yeah. I'm like, wow. That's my house payment. What? You got a $300 house payment? Between three and four. I got a really good deal on this house. Before we moved into this house, I had a... I think it was five... It had gotten down to 550 after the mortgage insurance came off. And I was real happy about that. Now we're now we're house poor. I saw a news clip today in the San Francisco Bay Area. The the average hump mm -hmm. price is I think it was eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars. Lord, it's ridiculous. And that's for like a one bedroom, one bath kind of house. Just can't imagine that, man. insane up until just a couple of years ago in the Pensacola Florida area you could get what I would call a mansion for three hundred thousand um, dollars prices are going a bit up now but yeah that's that's just crazy to spend I, I have a, a friend who came from San Diego and she said I just had a little house and it was like five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars it's very likely that I could sell this house and move back to Alabama and buy a three bedroom house and almost be free and clear. Mm. Yep, Ralph, that's about where I'm at. I think my monthly is about thirteen hundred. But it, you know, it's just that's the way it is. It's like that with everything. I remember the first time I purchased gasoline; it was sixty-four cents a gallon. Yeah, I miss those days. Mm -hmm. I you you got a few years on me, right, Chad? I think I got a couple on you. I'm, I'm 51. But I'm 44. And when I started driving at 16, I remember gas was 97 cents. Mm. And I'm like, dang, I'm a dollar a gallon. <laughs> and then it got up to like $4 a gallon. Yeah. It got bad there for a while. Well, man, my pipe is out and my battery's at 12%. So I guess it's about time to call this one. <clears throat> well, I thoroughly appreciate you having me along. Yeah, man, I appreciate you uh, stopping mm -hmm. in. And uh, we'll do it again sometime. What I'd like to do is do a, a few one-on-one -on -one hangouts, uh, maybe a handful of those, and then I'll start doing maybe three or four people at a time. And uh, I like the idea of getting different points of view on the same video. Yeah, I think that would be good. All right, you guys, we're going to call it. And uh, glad y'all got to see me.
Me too. Chat with you later. Bye, y'all.